So this is the second video of two about gene expression. This one's going to cover the process of transcription and translation. So on the right hand side of this paper I've got the descriptions already prepared. Um, it was easier than having to write it in as I go. So on the left hand side we have a diagram. And this diagram shows a molecule of DNA. And that molecule of DNA looks different to what it normally would because it has been untwisted. Okay? And as well as being untwisted, the strands have separated. Now they've separated because the hydrogen bonds that would normally form between these bases have been broken. And all of that, the untwisting and the unzipping, the breaking of the hydrogen bonds and the, the separation of the strands, is carried out by an enzyme called RNA polymerase. Okay, so previously when we talked about DNA replication, it'd be DNA polymerase that would do some certain other things, so add nucleotides to the strand. For this, RNA polymerase doesn't add nucleotides, it just unwinds the DNA and separates those strands. Okay, so the next stage in transcription, because this is what this is here, Okay, so the next stage in transcription is that we then bring in free RNA nucleotides. So this is where it differs from DNA replication, because it would normally be DNA nucleotides would use. But for now it is RNA nucleotides. So now we have to pair bases slightly differently. So a nucleotide of RNA, if it was pairing with A on this side, it wouldn't be thymine that it would use now. Because it's RNA, it would use uracil. Okay and hydrogen bonds would form between those bases on those nucleotides. So this adenine would pair with uracil, and the same procedure would happen all the way down, forming complementary base pairs to form this strand of mRNA. Okay, so each of these little bits in red that I'm showing are nucleotides, RNA nucleotides in particular. So RNA nucleotides are added, hydrogen bonds form between those bases, and at the moment this is just one bunch of nucleotides attached to the open strand of one side of DNA. It doesn't happen on the other side, it just happens on one side. Okay, so what I've drawn here so far, free RNA nucleotides pair with the bases on one side of that um, DNA molecule. And those hydrogen bonds form between the bases on DNA and on RNA. Now specifically this will be mRNA and that's because this is within the nucleus. So transcription occurs in the nucleus. Okay, this is easy to recognise in a diagram because DNA is found here and it wouldn't be found anywhere else. So this part around about the site would be the nuclear membrane. Okay, so next what we have to do is we have to get these nucleotides and we have to get them to form a strand. Now just the same as in DNA, to form that strand we have to form a sugar phosphate backbone using sugar phosphate bonds that would link each RNA nucleotide, the mRNA nucleotide, all the way down. Okay, and what we've made now is an mRNA molecule. Okay, so sugar phosphate backbone forms. Now a few points to note at the moment. If we talk about DNA molecules, three bases on this would be known as a triplet. Okay, now whereas three nucleotides on an mRNA molecule would be what's known as a codon. Now this strand of mRNA that we have here is known as the primary transcript okay, because it is the first copy that's made of DNA. So transcribe just means to copy. So that primary transcript then is formed. The primary transcript contains two different sections. It contains areas called introns, which do not code for protein and therefore aren't useful to us at the moment. And they contain areas called exons, which do code for protein. So what we do at this stage is we splice that. 
So what that means is the introns, the ones that aren't coding, will be removed and we splice together the exons, which are the areas that do code for protein. So once we do that, we form a mature transcript. And it is this mature transcript that can leave the nucleus. So the mature transcript then leaves. And because the purpose of all this is to express a gene and to make a protein, we need to then go to the site of protein synthesis in a cell. And that would be the ribosomes. So your mature transcript of those mRNA nucleotides that we have spliced leaves that nucleus through a pore in the nuclear membrane and it travels to the ribosome. So on the next sheet, what I have is a diagram of that to show you. Okay, and the same as before, I'm going to have the description covered up just to show you step by step. Now here on the left, we've got a strand of mRNA, which would be your mature transcript. Okay, now that mature transcript is made up of mRNA nucleotides, which are only exons, only areas that code for protein that we need. Now it attaches to this structure, which I've very lightly drawn, and I'm going to go over a bit darker. So that structure here is the site of protein synthesis, and is therefore a ribosome. I've added this in pencil because what I'm going to do is move it along a bit because this process involves the ribosome moving along that mature transcript and moving along that mRNA. So what we need to do now is show you the next bit, which is mRNA transcript will attach to the ribosome. And then what we're going to look at is the top part. Now these molecules, if you'd had a nosy at the previous video, are tRNA molecules. Now these three bases, because they're in a tRNA molecule, are called an anticodon. Okay, so T for the anticodon. Now this tRNA molecule is missing a little bit on top of it because it has not yet collected its specific amino acid, whereas this one has so this here, on the top of that diagram, of a tRNA molecule is an amino acid joined onto it. Now note that this codon, EUA, has a different amino acid attached to the tRNA than this, sorry, this anticodon, sorry, has a different amino acid than this anticodon and this tRNA. Okay, each anticodon will only encode for one specific amino acid, each tRNA with that anticodon will only code for one specific amino acid. So this mature transcript attaches to the ribosome and the specific amino acids will be collected by a specific tRNA molecule. Now when we talk about this process, this process is translation. And translation occurs at the ribosome. So this mature transcript has left the nucleus and reached the ribosome. Now the second point here in the description is talked about start and stop codons. Now if you did an essay question on this, you could discuss this at any point. Just as a very general statement, transcription begins at the start codon and then would end a stop codon. Now this start codon has been read, which tells the ribosome to start processing it and start to translate it from this area here. So tRNA molecule then would bring its specific amino acid down and pair with this codon on mRNA. So this here would be a codon. Now the codons are complementary to an anticodon and a tRNA molecule. So if we looked at this codon here, which is UAU, we would have to get a pairing with an anticodon that would match the complementary base pairing that we know about already. 
So e, uh, u, e, u would then pair with e, u, e. So this tRNA molecule here would come down and pair with that codon here. Now, those, when they're aligned, would have hydrogen bonds between those bases, the same as any other base pairing. Okay, so an anticodon and a tRNA would bind with a codon and mRNA, and hydrogen bonds form between those complementary bases on either of those anticodons and codons. Okay, now that also happens on the next attachment site. So notice how there's two attachment sites, two codons, two areas on the ribosome. So the ribosome then reads the next bit and looks for a codon, or an anticodon, sorry, that matches this codon. So we would then have C, G, C. So it would pull this amino acid and this tRNA molecule carrying the amino acid down. And that would then form hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases. Now right now, what we have are two tRNA molecules aligning with their codons, their matching codons, on the mRNA molecule at that ribosome. Okay, now at the moment, they have not formed a polypeptide. They have not formed what will ultimately become a protein. What needs to happen is, we need to form what's called a peptide bond. So a peptide bond is a bond that joins amino acids together. So what we have, is a peptide bond here. Now at the moment we've still not really got a polypeptide, all we have are two amino acids joined together. So what we need to do now is that we need to move the ribosome along a bit. So I can rub out my ribosome. and just move it down that mRNA molecule, that mature transcript. And it will then read off the next codon. Now because this amino acid is now joined to this one, we don't need this tRNA molecule anymore. So it then is released. without its amino acid attached to it, because it has left it to begin this chain. And it can then go again and do the same procedure. So go and collect the same amino acid and bring it again if there's another of the same codon to match with along the line. So now we have two amino acids and we have another space now to join another tRNA molecule. So now we need to read that codon on mRNA and get the next anticodon that would match it. So if it is UAG, we would have EUC. It would pair and bring down amino acid that it carries. And again, another peptide bond would form. And now because we're forming a chain, we don't need this tRNA molecule anymore. So this one can leave. Okay, so again, note that it's gone without its amino acid because it is attached now to this polypeptide chain. And again, the ribosome will then move along. And the procedure will continue. The whole process then of pairing an anticodon with a codon and bringing the appropriate and specific amino acid to that our ribosome continues and it forms a whole polypeptide. So we'll bring down another amino acid and another peptide bond will form. Okay, and that procedure continues. So the ribosome moves along that mRNA strand and continues to form that polypeptide. Every time it moves along one, the first tRNA molecule will leave. Okay, so 
The key thing to note then is the order of these codons, the bases in these codons, will determine the order that these amino acids are placed in. Okay, and that will then determine the order of amino acids in that polypeptide and ultimately what will be made a protein. Okay, now eventually this will run out of mRNA and it'll reach a stop codon and that process will stop. So once that translation is finished, that polypeptide is folded and it is made into a protein structure when you use hydrogen bonds to fold it together. Okay, and that, pro that whole protein would be 3D in nature. So as a quick diagram to show you of that protein, often it's represented as a kind of twisted molecule. So this would be an amino acid. Now I know the shape doesn't match what we've got here, but for simplicity's sake, it's easier to draw. Okay, so we have an amino acid chain, which would be described as a polypeptide at the moment, because we have peptide bonds that are joining amino acids together. So these blue ones, like I showed in the previous diagram, are your peptide bonds. But to make this a 3D molecule, and to hold this 3D molecule together, we would also have hydrogen bonds that would help hold that into a 3D structure. Okay, and that would be twisted, formed into a shape, and allow that to be specific to a specific function. So that, very quickly and very short and, and sweet, is the whole process of transcription and translation. Okay, so that covers that whole gene expression from the beginning, from RNA and how it copies DNA, right the way through to a polypeptide being formed into a protein.